Hi, I'm Danny Vieira from Modern Man and Ministries, and I have a very special interview that I'm going to do today with a woman who came to Bella Vida Lifestyle Center with her husband. Her name is June Rick. Before she was leaving, I started to talk to her about some history in the Adventist Church that I think we all need to hear. Now, I want to read to you first from the scriptures, a warning from Paul to the church. And this is in Acts chapter 20, verse 29. It says, For I know this, that after my departure, grievous wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And Ellen White comments on that verse, and she says, Paul trembled for the church as, looking into the future, he saw the attacks which she must suffer from both external and internal foes. With solemn earnestness, he bade his brethren guard vigilantly their sacred trust. I know that in the scriptures, we can learn from the stories of the past. I'll never forget when we sat and talked that evening about church history, and you started to share some things with me that I have never heard before. But this has to do with conversations that you had with the late Dr. Wil Wilkinson. Wilkinson. That's right. Now, who was Dr. Wilkinson? I went to Tacoma Park, Maryland to join the nursing program. So from about 1954 to 1958, my husband and I were in Tacoma Park while I went through the nursing program. My husband had heard of B.G. Wilkinson, and uh, he started taking me on my days off to Dr. Wilkinson, who was a man in his 80s at that time. And it was the most thrilling thing to sit at this man's feet because he opened up all of the early history of the Adventist church. Mm. Dr. Wilkinson told us that he was the first PhD in our denomination. He had, I guess in his 20s or late teens, found the Adventist message and he ran with it. Mm. He went on, became his, got his PhD, and he was hired at Battle Creek College to be professor of I believe it was history, Greek, and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was at age 25. Wow. He was a young, a very brilliant young man. As he worked there, of course, Ellen White was also at bat in the Battle Creek area, and Dr. Kellogg, and we had a printing house there, mm -hmm. a large church uh, beside the college. Dr. Wilkinson spoke eight different languages fluently. He was a brilliant man. And as the years went by, of course, they moved to Tacoma Park, where our work was moved to. He told us about the Battle Creek fires. And Ellen White had warned uh, our publishing house that our publishing house was to print only Adventist literature. Mm -hmm. A fire broke out in the um, publishing house mm -hmm. yes. and burnt it to the ground. Mm -hmm. Ellen White, what later came out was that the night of the fire, the publishers had on their desk a book, a spiritualistic book that we were going to print. You know, June, the book was actually Kellogg's The Living Temple that was teaching pantheism. You know, that God isn't a personal being, but a mysterious essence that pervades all nature. In other words, he's in the trees, he's in the water, he's in the plants, he's in human beings. And that night, the Lord said, this is enough, and he burnt the place down. Bur burnt it down. When I think of those judgments of God, you know, the first one actually was February 18, 1902, which was the largest and the best known Adventist institution, Battle Creek Sanitarium. The second one we know is the Review and Herald Publishing Association, December 30th, 1902, because 
of the fact that they were going to print The Living Temple by John Harvey Kellogg. Wilkinson told us again that the firemen, when they would hear to call in Battle Creek, they would say, oh, we can't put them out. Those are Adventist fires. So they knew that there was something about Mm -hmm. those fires that Mm -hmm. could not be quenched until they burnt to the ground. He told us the story about John Harvey Kellogg. He said that presidents, congressmen, um, you know, people high up in, in Washington, D.C. came for healing. So you can see God working there to have the Adventists known in the center of, of, our, of our nation, okay? So, uh, you know, Satan saw this, and we were told that the uh, health work was the right arm of the message. Amen. So you can imagine Satan wanted to knock that out. Oh, yes. What happened was Dr. Wilkinson said he actually saw Kellogg sometimes out walking down the street with a young, a handsome young man dressed totally in black. Kellogg never introduced this man to anyone. Really? Later, Ellen White was shown that the man who was walking with Kellogg was Satan himself. Dr. Wilkinson told us that Ellen White had said this, and I don't think she ever put that in print. Ellen White may have never wrote about the man in black that was with Kellogg, but I do have statements from her. In fact, she wrote to the doctor, the specious, scheming representations of God and nature carry their charming, soothing influence as a peace and safety pill to give to the people in the spiritualistic views that Satan has instituted in your theories. So he, she did confirm that it was Satan himself that was influencing these pantheistic theories. In fact, Ellen White compared the living temple to the forbidden tree, and she makes this statement in letter 224 in 1903, like Adam and Eve, who took the apple from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and ate it, our own sheep and lambs are swallowing the deceptive morsels of air offered them in the pages of this book. I am instructed to warn our brethren and sisters not to discuss the nature of our God. So in two places, we can see that she confirmed that it was Satan himself because we know that Satan was the one at the tree who deceived Adam and Eve. From the time that this young man was seen with him, Kellogg's ideas began to change, his whole theology, and, and he started to get a following. And uh, though Ellen White worked with him, he never changed. He yeah. had, uh, had taken this into his bosom. The Lord had to burn it all down. So. so this Dr. Wilkinson, was he, how was he received by his peers in the Adventist? Well, at that time, I think everything was okay. Mm-hmm. He was brought to Tacoma Park, and he became president of uh, our college there. He did? Yes, he did. And he was president of Washington Missionary College, which is now Columbia Union College. He was president of that for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. During that time, not only the presidency, but he taught all of the theology students, okay? Then men from the general conference came to him and said, Ben, you are working too hard. We're going to relieve you of some of your duties. We will send um, a a young man to teach your your theology (coughs) students, and that will take the burden off of you. So, okay, Um, Ben went along with it, and this young man came and he began teaching our theology students. Well, it wasn't too long until some of the students who already had been taught by Wilkinson came to him and said, Dr. Wilkinson, there's something strange here. He doesn't seem to be teaching what we have always taught and what we believe. Mm -hmm. So it was very insidious, but some of these brighter young men 
were picking up that there was something wrong here. Well, Dr. Wilkinson did not walk in and confront this uh, theologian. He just simply began watching uh, the mail. Uh, out in the hallway was oh, kind of a mail. pigeonhole. There was a pigeonhole yeah. where all of the mail of all the various okay. teachers and everything He's was put in. The mail. So he's, and the <clears throat> pigeonholes are open, they're not closed. So Wilkinson's watching this professor's mail. And one day this manila envelope comes in and Wilkinson sees the return address coming from Georgetown University. And Wilkinson took that manila envelope into his office. He steamed it open and he read its contents. I believe it was the first Jesuit university in the United States. That's right, it was. This is where it Bill was. Clinton went to school. Yes, of course he was intrigued when he saw that address. When he opened it up, he found the instructions in there as to what this man was to teach no. the theology students for the next few weeks or the next month. <gasps> So he was evidently getting monthly instructions as to what he was to teach. He was a plant, he a was. Jesuit plant. But what has often roused my curiosity, who were the men in the general conference who saw to this man getting in? And I will get to that a little later. Okay. Anyhow, Wilkinson <clears throat> called this man into his office and he put the mail in front of him. He said, I know who you are, I know why you are here, wow. and I know where you come from. He said, within the hour, the young man was gone. Never saw him again. You know, Ellen Once White says exposed. that Satan's chief works at the headquarters of our faith. Mm. That's a powerful yes. statement. Yes. Now, why wouldn't the enemy target our colleges, our theological departments, Battle Creek, all of these institutions. Absolutely. Not only had to, uh, to knock out our health mm -hmm. work, but now he had to work, you know, uh, knock out the rest of our, our mm -hmm. beliefs. And so um, somewhere through the years, Dr. Wilkinson began to write books once he had mm -hmm. retired from there. Now he was getting older. And um, he wrote two books he wrote um, our authorized Bible vindicated. I, I read about that on Wikipedia a little bit, that he was, mm -hmm. he was exposing changes or omissions in other versions of the Bible. Well, at the time that we knew him, he was thundering out about the Revised Standard Version. Wow. That was one of the early versions that was coming in. Mm. And he told us, he said, these versions are going to destroy our faith. Adventism. Yes. He said that he believed that the versions were made to get at God's church and wipe us out, as well as the rest of the Christian world to just change their theology. Mm -hmm. And so um, my husband would take Dr. Wilkinson to his speaking appointments he would. Yes, and I often got to sit in the audiences and listen <clears throat> to him, and I remember him holding up the Revised Standard Version, mm -hmm. and he said, I would only take this thing into the pulpit to expose it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, pretty pointed. He was very pointed in what he said, but he was warning our people, and of course, there were people in our denomination mm -hmm. getting very upset with him. And Wilkinson became a target. He had a close friend who came to him one night and said, Ben, they're going to put you on trial tomorrow morning over that book. They weren't even going to warn Wilkinson that he was to come before some of the leading men. They were just going to call him and say, Ben, come on down. We want to see you. And Ben would have walked into a nest Blind. of vipers <clears throat> not knowing what was ahead. But God gave him the warning, and he said he stayed up all night in preparation. Hmm. When he went into that meeting, he just whipped them. The Holy Spirit was with the him. The Holy Spirit was with him, and they couldn't gainsay anything that he said. No matter what accusations he came that they hmm. hurled against him, he was able to overcome it. Uh, they were dealing with a very brilliant mind and a man full of the Holy Spirit.
The other book that Dr. Wilkinson wrote was Truth Triumphant. And he told us how he went to all the libraries of Europe to gather ancient history. Mm. And the thing I found fascinating was that when he went to England, he was able to look at the original Waldensian manuscripts really? in their own language, and he was able to read it fluently. No, no interpretation. <laughs> he just read the Waldensian languages, Beautiful. and from that, he put his books together. Really? Okay. However, Truth Triumphant was also a <coughs> thorn in the side of one of our leading men in Washington, D.C. And who might that be? That was L. E. Froome, Leroy Froome, whom everybody thought revered. And Dr. Wilkinson told us that from Leroy Froome, he ordered, because Wilkinson was going to have a second edition printed, mm -hmm. Froome called the um, printing house, told them to destroy the plates. You must be kidding. No. And we, we said, got more to say about Leroy Froome here in a minute, too, Yes, don't we, we do. Uh, Leroy Froome ordered those plates destroyed, and we said to Dr. Wilkinson, well, why don't you get the plates done again? And he said, I don't have the money. He was way up in his 80s then. He said, I just don't have the money. So if anyone has that book, consider it a treasure. I mean, you're looking at something that the Roman Church wanted to destroy, okay? Because it gave the true history of, of uh, the early, early churches and the Waldensians and what they went through at the hands of Rome. Powerful. But uh, <clears throat> anyhow, moving on to Leroy Froome. Yeah, this was some <laughs> of the most interesting information you shared with me because as, as you share this, I'll tell a little bit how God also led me to expose some mm. of Rome's agents in our denomination. Right. Well, Leroy Froome hated Dr. Wilkinson. And he would call Dr. Wilkinson up on his birthday every year. And he would say, Ben, are you still alive? He just hated him so much he was waiting for the man to die. So um, Dr. Wilkinson told us who the early Catholic fathers were and how they destroyed, you know, truth. And so we knew the names of these Catholic fathers. Mm. Well, in Tacoma Park, uh, a little while later, Dr. Froome held an evangelistic series, if you can call it that, but it was one, it was uh, Faith of Our Fathers mm -hmm. or something like that. We went to about two meetings and we couldn't take it anymore. Every one of the fathers that he listed as being the forefathers of the Adventist church or of Protestantism were all the Roman Catholic fathers that Wilkinson no. No. had told us about. So at that point, the next time I saw Dr. Wilkinson, I said, Dr. Wilkinson, is Elder Froome a Jesuit? Wow. Dr. Wilkinson wouldn't answer it, but I could see from the look on his face that there were big questions mm -hmm. because of the way this man had fought him. Mm -hmm. And um, there, we also had the book Questions on Doctrine. That's what I want to talk about here. Questions on Doctrine written, mm -hmm. and there were three men. Dr. Wilkinson, one day we came to his house and he was pacing up and down and he had a manuscript in his hand. And he said, this is a book they're getting ready to print. He said, this book is pointing a dagger at the Adventist heart. That presented us more in favor to the evangelical world. That's right. That we didn't look as peculiar now on the nature of Christ and other pivotal doctrines of the Adventist church. That's right. So Wilkinson was very upset about that. But there was nothing he could do about it. Um, there were three authors of that book, and Wilkinson said, look at this. He said, they're not even listing the authors. They don't even want anyone to know who the men were that were behind the writing of this book. One of them was Froome. And the other two, June, were Walter E. Reed and Roy Allen Anderson.
all three of these men were the most prominent up in the general conference. Really? Yes. I don't see Leroy Froome's name in here. I have a copy of Questions on Doctrines, and it was published in 1957. But inside the book, it says that it was prepared by a representative group of Seventh-day Adventist leaders, Bible teachers, and editors. These were the things that were going on in Tacoma Park while we were there. Wickedness in high places. Wickedness in high places. Thirty years later, we were living up in Oregon at the time, and... Um, at a church potluck, we met a lady that was just there for the day. She was an Adventist lady. I don't know if she was visiting relatives or what she was doing. But in the conversation, I found out that she had lived at Tacoma Park for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out the years and everything. And somehow in the conversation, she told us a story. And she said that she had a, a Catholic friend, a good Catholic friend. And one day she said to her, I want to introduce you to vegetarian diet. <laughs> so she took her to the, um, the sanitarium hospital where we had a lovely, um, you know, dining room. And the many teacher. visitors would come in. And so she took her there and they were eating their food. And at, in walked uh, Elder Froome and another general conference man with him. And this woman about dropped her fork, the Catholic woman. And she said, what are they doing here? And our Adventist lady said, well, what do you mean by that? Those, that's uh, Elder Froome, you know, up in the general conference. And she named the other man. And the woman said, no, no, they are not, uh, they're, they're Catholic priests. What? And, and our friend, this, our Adventist lady says, what do you mean? They're Adventist ministers. This woman said, no. She says, I've, I've been at mass when they were performing mass. I've been in Catholic churches where these men were performing mass. No. I've heard that story from another person who said that the man who was walking with Leroy Froome that day that the woman identified they were Catholic priests was the other author of Questions on Doctrine, Roy Allen Anderson. So uh, this lady passed this on to me. I wish now I had gotten her name mm -hmm. and her address. Well, I mean, think about this a minute, you know, as you've looked at Kellogg. We've talked about a brilliant mind, a brilliant man who's written you know, so many books. I mean, here's one, The Art of Massage by John Harvey Kellogg. And, it's sad. And there's just so many books. I just mm -hmm. got a book on hydrotherapy, and it's, it's huge. Mm. And colon hygiene, you know, and all the work that he's done on physiology and yeah. anatomy, setting up, you know, the Battle Creek sanitariums. And, yeah. and, and, and the devil wanted to nail the health work. He Absolutely, he had to knock yeah, it so out. So you got that story where, you know, and, and, and we can't absolutely prove it other than it came from Dr. Wilkinson's mouth, who Ellen White had told, and Wilkinson yes. personally told you? Personally. Personally told you. We sat at his feet and just <clears throat> drank in Adventist history. And he would tell us all of these things that went on in the denomination. Questions on doctrines this comes out now and just caused a big uproar within Adventism yes, because this was softening, changing, altering our historical stance mm -hmm. or position on theology. That's right. And, and it, it came in and it started causing a division on the nature of Christ. Yes. So they were causing turmoil yes. within the Adventist church, getting people to question what we once taught. And, and, and then this question on doctrines, kind of to the evangelical world. We didn't look as bad anymore. And this woman recognized Leroy Froome as a Catholic priest. Yeah, she said she had been to mass in his churches. But it makes sense because mm -hmm. who would be behind questions on doctrine? And what is so sad is that Leroy mm -hmm. Froome's name to this date 
comes up in our writings. He's revered. He's respected. They still think of him as the greatest. <coughs> and he actually book, wrote a book to counteract Dr. Wilkinson's oh. book on Truth Triumphant. Yeah, on, on our fathers, you know. While in Tacoma Park, it seemed like just my husband and I would visit Dr. Wilkinson. And we asked him once, why aren't the theology students coming to you? And he said, because they have been warned away from me, that, that I'm a quack, that, you know, that there's something wrong with I don't know what they told him. But the thing was, we then got curious, and we started talking to theology students, and they would all say, oh, B.G. Wilkinson, we will have nothing to do with that old quack, you know? And so uh, they made sure that our theology students were so poisoned against him that they wouldn't go near him. That's Isn't that something? Yes, and who are they? They warned Well, them. we don't know. But they were the leaders in the The leaders up in the General Conference, those who taught the theology students. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, mm -hmm. I was concerned that there was a Jesuit infiltrator in the Adventist church. And oh. maybe some of you have read my book, The Final Inquisition, yes. where I exposed Dr. Samuel Bakayoki yes. because of my concerns and looking at his books and his material, that they were endorsed by the Lord's Day Alliance, mm -hmm. you know, that promotes Sunday, yeah. you know, as the Lord's Day. They were endorsed by the Society of Jesus, SJ, which was the Jesuits. When you look at what he was teaching in the end, changing and altering our prophecies, you yes. know, 538 to 1798, taking the eyes off Rome onto the Muslims. And, That's and here interesting. He's, he's bringing all this stuff in, and, and he, he gets wrecked. He went to the Gregoriana, mm -hmm. the Gregoriana yeah. Jesuit school in Rome, Italy, and he's recognized and honored by the Pope for his work, for his, his book That's from impossible. Sabbath to Sunday, which yeah. I stayed up all night, like, like Wilkinson, preparing for them to come against Truth Triumphant, yeah. I stayed up all night reading from Sabbath to Sunday, and I confronted Dr. Bakayoki personally in the Galt Seventh-day Adventist Church, and mm -hmm. I told him I'd been up all night, from sa from all night long reading his book from Sabbath to Sunday, and I found nowhere that when you rev referred to Revelation 1.10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. I don't see where you're referring to this Lord's Day as the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. church went silent, and there were 200 people there. And he said, very good observation, young man. It doesn't. They you have know, become it, so bold now that they don't even mind telling you. They don't even mind telling you. But he says, but my new book does. And, and, and he oh, sat no. there, and I could not believe my ears that he started saying, that he was good friends with the Lord's Day Alliance mm. and that they came over and would eat spaghetti at his house and yes. they loved the special Sabbath sauce of the spaghetti and were friends with the Lord's Day Alliance. And I sat there and I said, I'll be. But when I first exposed him prior to writing my book, mm -hmm. I exposed him in my newsletter, The Elijah Prophecy, that you can sign up free and get mm -hmm. at modernmana.org, the Elijah Prophecy. I exposed him as a Jesuit infiltrator and at the prompting of my good friend, Bill Hughes, who wrote The Secret Terrorists, yes. showing the Jesuits behind so many different things in history mm -hmm. and how they played the part, right. you know, in some of these, these tragedies that happened, even the sinking of the Titanic. Isn't that something? You know, the Oklahoma bombing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about the World Trade Centers. Yes, yes. We've been, there's a whole chapter on the Jesuits and the great controversy, yeah. how they're going to infiltrate, you know, and we have more to fear from within, within, we're told, from Ellen White, than from without. See, yes. whether you believe what she's sharing or not, or from Dr. Wilkinson or not, I think that this is a tragedies that have happened in Adventism from, mm -hmm. from, Dr. Kellogg from Questions on Doctrine, and I believe 
that the Jesuits are behind it all. I believe they're infiltrated mm -hmm. Tacoma Park. I believe they've infiltrated our colleges and our universities. They're pushing the spiritual formation agenda mm -hmm. right now and the one movement. They're trying to take our kids into feeling, into rock music, into, in, into to emptying our minds and letting God fill us and going to the monks of Catholicism to learn how they can yes. teach our people how to worship God more effectively and to get in tune by emptying their mind. This is a Jesuit plot. Can I tell yes, one other story I that I just thought please, of very quickly? Please do. This is when Dr. Wilkinson was back in Battle Creek. Ellen White was shown a vision in which she saw two young men who would present themselves to the college to enter the theology program. Now this is before it happened? Before it happened. And the Lord warned her uh, that she was to warn the college not to let those young men in, for they were Jesuits. So Dr. Wilkinson told us that story of how she was warned. Mm -hmm. And they did not let them in. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Wilkinson told us also that she had been shown that uh, they would not be, that they would keep trying to get into our denomination. But they said that they would not be able to get in until she is dead. And so they waited for Ellen White to die, and then they started infiltrating. You, and what are we seeing in our church today? We what have, are we seeing riddled. in our church? We're, we're riddled, riddled with new theology, books of a new order, Jesuit priests speaking to our students, That's it. Catholic priests coming in to speak to our students, people being called forward to receive communion, as the Catholics do in the Eucharist, mm -hmm. merging with hospitals with the Catholic Church. That's it. I'm seeing a transformation in our church. And, and I want to say this, that the church will appear about the fall. It won't. It will remain while the mm -hmm. sinners in Zion are sifted out. And Ellen White says in Acts of the Apostles, page 11, that faithful souls have constituted the church of God from the mm -hmm. beginning. God will have a triumphant church. Truth will triumph, Dr. Amen. Wilkinson. Remember his title of his book? That's right. And I want to say that God has his little company, his small remnant, his faithful few that are going to go through and finish this job of preaching the three angels' messages to the world. Now, Amen. June, when I asked you to sit with me, and you know I wrote the Virgin Mary book, Okay. And three million copies in seven languages. Mm. I was in St. Louis when the Pope, John Paul II, met with Clinton. We gave out 60,000 Virgin Mary books at the largest indoor papal mass in history. Mm -hmm. I've had death threats. And while we're passing out these books, and while we're giving out literature exposing the beast, Mm -hmm. of Revelation 13, the Adventists were apologizing through the media for the dissident for groups going on. that yeah. were there standing in defense of the truth mm -hmm. and exposing the beast, right? And the yes. first beast that was before him. But you know, there were things that hmm. came out later. The work that you did and that others did who were also there passing out literature had its results. Thank you. Because... Uh, not as the crowds that came out to see the Pope were not as large as they had anticipated. They were. They and this also shows, though, that God has faithful people in Rome. There was a Roman Catholic priest that was watching some of our people give out this literature. Yeah. He walked up to them, asked for a book. He looked through it, and then he came back. He said, "Can I help you pass these out?" No. Yes. Kidding. So I, hadn't heard I really one. believe that there are children in Rome mm -hmm. who will one day stand up for this truth when our people are <laughs> falling by the wayside. Well, on our video we made of that event, there was a Catholic priest, he, and he was just finishing up. He's going into the work, and he, I handed him a book. He said he had read it, 
And I yes. said, well, praise God. His name was Luke. I said, praise God. I pray that he brings those seeds to fruition and you'll be standing on the right side. Yes. Now, when I asked <laughs> you to do this, you said to me, you I, had some reservation. Tell I, us why. I did. I had some reservations because through the years, I have known of people who have actually been murdered for their faith. Um, and you know, whenever we do uh, come into the public light, we become a target. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm kind of retiring and <laughs> shy, and I thought, oh my, you know. But then I realized that people needed to know Praise some of God. these things. Praise God. And God is in control. You know, yeah. I, I think the big point today is that even though the devil has hit our denomination we... in many ways and, and severely, yes, and we know not just the alpha of apostasies happened, but the omega is coming. Yes. And Ellen White says that she's, she's startled for our people. Yes, You're seeing spiritualism come in. You're seeing the change in the music, the worship styles, the worldliness, mm -hmm. the spiritual formation. You're seeing books of a new order, human philosophies. She also saw that all this would happen mm -hmm. before the sweeping away of the structure. You know she said that? Yes, but I believe this. Jesus said, my sheep hear my, my voice. voice. He will triumph. And he will triumph Amen. because those in modern Israel who really <laughs> love the Lord are not going to We're be not fooled. Go down. No, no, they will not go down. And actually, those that are going out, it's a purging. Yes. I believe the purging has been going on in our church almost since it started. You know, I want to tell our listening public here and we'll come back if there's any final words you want to say. I but if you want to read my Virgin Mary book, if you want to read it in Spanish, if you want to read it in French, if you want to read the final inquisition exposing Samuel Bakayoki that I did prior to his death and then came out with my book, The Final Inquisition, telling you what's coming from Rome and how the Jesuits work, you can go to a website that I have that not many people know and read it for free. Oh, and the wow. website is www.virginmarybook.com virginmarybook.com and they can enter there and they can read mm -hmm. these books for free and I'm just grateful because we need to look how the Lord has led in the past oh yes that even with the murmuring the complaining the apostasy the idolatry um, what's happened to the Jewish mm -hmm. nation He's going to have people that are victorious in the Laodicean era. Well, you know, ancient Israel, we just have to look at God's power in ancient Israel. The devil took the Jewish people down again and again. They were led into idolatry and all forms of pagan religions. Mm -hmm. But through the Jewish people was to come the Messiah. Amen. And God kept a line of people faithful yeah till Messiah could come. Though the devil tried to destroy the Jewish church to keep the Messiah from coming, he was unable. And it's Amen. the same with Adventism. Though it looks like it's going to fall, it's not going to. God's going to bring this movement through. The only Amen. question is, will I go through? That's, That's my big question. That's what we have to yes. ask. You know, I often say this too. It's a message and a movement. Absolutely. A message and a movement. Yes. And we want to stay faithful to the message and the, the movement. movement. Right. And sound the warning. Yes. Be able to speak up. You know, cry aloud, spare not, show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob. Yes. Their sins. Are there any closing thoughts that you'd like to share, June? Not really. I think I've said what was on my mind and heart. You know, probably there are many stories through yeah. the years, but we can't spend all day here. Well, I want to th thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your boldness. I mean, I am so thrilled mm -hmm. to hear about this information because, you know, I'm deeply engaged in the medical missionary work. Yes, you I, are. I'm learning more about the history of Kellogg and, and his healing techniques, Yes, you know, 
And I'm also sitting here watching the, this, this apostasy and Adventism today. And, and even though, I'll just say that even though there may be Jesuits and Catholic priests and other plants that roam mm -hmm. the Vatican yes. has placed and planted in the headquarters of our faith, God mm -hmm. is going to triumph. God will have a people. The Bible says the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant, remnant of, of her seed, seed who keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. So in the end, we triumph. They That's won't right. stop it. No. You cannot stop no. the Lord. No, he's in charge. He's in charge. And his power is stronger than the devil's. Well, thank you, June. Oh, you're very it's welcome. It's been a privilege to get to know you. Well, it's been a privilege to be at Bella Vida. It really has. Thank, thank you.